Imagine an alien world with vast lakes, rivers, and mountain ranges, cloudy skies with wind and rain, and enough water to support a global population. What if this exo-Earth were right here in our own solar system just waiting for us? This is Titan, the largest moon of the planet Saturn and the only other place in the solar system that looks anything like the Earth. But looks can be deceptive. Because the lakes are filled with rocket fuel, the mountains are plastic, and the clouds are hydrogen. Is that a deal breaker though? Can we still make Titan into a place where people might live one day? Let's talk about it. This is the space race. Titan is the second largest moon in our solar system. Only the moon of Jupiter, Ganymede, is larger and only by around 2%. Titan is actually bigger than the planet Mercury, and it is the only moon in our solar system known to have a dense atmosphere. Really, it's one of the very few places around here with both a hard surface and a reasonable atmosphere. There's basically just Earth, Mars, Venus, and Titan. Titan orbits Saturn at a distance of about 1.2 million kilometers, or 759,000 miles, and the planetary system is about nine and a half times further from the sun than the Earth. That means light from the sun takes about 80 minutes to reach Titan, and the sunlight is about 100 times more faint. From the surface of Titan, the sky will only ever be as bright as what you see at twilight here on Earth, just after the sun sets, but before the sky turns black. In theory, you would see an epic view of the planet Saturn from the surface of Titan if the atmosphere wasn't so thick. Because of its relatively small size and low gravity, the atmosphere of Titan extends 600 kilometers into space, about 10 times higher than Earth's. At these high altitudes, the sun's ultraviolet light splits molecules of nitrogen and methane, then recombine into a variety of organic chemicals. These compounds form a thick orange haze that blocks our view of the moon's surface with the naked eye. The pressure of the atmosphere on Titan is about 60% greater than on Earth, so the weight of the air would feel about the same as swimming 15 meters or 50 feet below the surface of the ocean. But the force of gravity on Titan is only about 14% of what it is on Earth. It would make for a very strange experience. In theory, you might be able to fly on Titan just by strapping wings to your arms and flapping hard enough, like Icarus style. Thumbs up the video if you're brave enough to fly a wingsuit on Titan, because god I would be terrified. Methane vapor in the atmosphere condenses into clouds and rains down onto the surface as a liquid where it fills a vast network of rivers, lakes, and seas. The reason that methane exists in liquid form on Titan is because the surface temperature is down around negative 180 degrees Celsius or negative 290 Fahrenheit. That's about the same cryogenic temperature that SpaceX stores methane to use as rocket fuel in the Starship. Titan has dozens of methane lakes and three seas. The largest sea, known as Kraken Mare, is around the size of Texas and could reach depths of 200 meters or 650 feet. Solid hydrocarbons formed in the upper atmosphere also make their way down to the surface of Titan and gather like sand that forms into vast deserts of dunes around the equatorial region. These grains have more in common with plastic than they do with rock. We know that there is a lot of propylene on Titan, which is the key ingredient in the plastic number five that we use to make food containers. Underneath the hydrocarbon sand is what looks like rock, but is actually crystalline ice. The ice forms into mountains through volcanic activity where liquid water erupts out of the surface. Imagine a volcano with slush instead of magma that rapidly freezes solid into a jagged ice mountain. The frozen surface of Titan is a crust that is about 200 kilometers or 125 miles thick, and that crust is floating on top of a subterranean ocean of liquid water that is just a bit thicker than the outer crust. Underneath that is a solid core of silicate rock. Okay, so Titan sounds pretty nuts, 
But is it somewhere that humans could actually go without facing certain death? Probably, yeah. It wouldn't be easy, but it should be possible. The biggest advantage to Titan is that it has a dense atmosphere with lots of pressure, but not too much pressure. That means we would not need a pressurized spacesuit to walk around on Titan the way that we would on Mars, and that is a big win. The biggest downside to Titan, however, is the temperature. Humans would freeze solid really fast if exposed on the surface. So even if we don't need a pressure suit, we would need a special temperature suit. Your Canada Goose parka will not do you good out there. We'd also need a respirator system as well. The atmosphere of Titan is mostly nitrogen based, which is good because so is the Earth's. But while we have 20% oxygen content, Titan has pretty much zero oxygen and lots of methane, hydrogen, and propane to breathe. So that sucks. But to be fair, you've probably noticed that both the liquid and air on Titan is super explosive and flammable. The lack of oxygen is the only thing that would prevent the moon from erupting into an epic fireball. On the plus side though, Titan does offer us protection from cosmic radiation and solar winds. The magnetosphere of the planet Saturn is so huge that Titan actually spends around 95% of its orbit within that protective region that repels the solar winds. In addition, the thick atmosphere of Titan itself is an added layer of protection for the wild radiation of the galaxy. That's not a luxury that we have on a thin atmosphere planet like Mars. So can people live on Titan? Absolutely, we can as long as we are careful. In many ways, it would actually be easier than trying to live on our moon or Mars. Titan is probably the most hospitable piece of solid ground in the solar system away from Earth. So if we can live on Titan, does that mean that we should? Again, the answer is probably yes, but with a bunch of caveats. But what might that look like? Terraforming this moon is a tricky one. Because of the thick atmosphere, we could probably trigger a greenhouse effect and begin to trap heat near the surface to warm it up. By increasing the surface temperature just 25 degrees Celsius or 75 Fahrenheit, the liquid methane would boil and evaporate and the rain cycle would stop. That could do some pretty weird stuff to the atmosphere. And if we kept raising the temperature up to a comfortable level for human beings, then at some point along the way, the water ice surface of the moon would start to melt away, leaving us with a massive ocean world. The closest solid ground would be the moon's core at 450 kilometers or 280 miles deep. We could maybe find a middle ground, say bring the surface temperature to around negative 20 degrees Celsius or 70 Fahrenheit. That would keep the ice frozen, but also allow for people to be comfortable when exposed to the air. In that case, you would be perfectly happy in a Canada Goose jacket and a breathing mask. Though that kind of plan brings us dangerously close to melting the whole planet accidentally if the climate shifts warmer for any kind of reason. The question is, would warming or thawing Titan out into an ocean world be any better than just leaving it as it is? I would say probably not. The surface of Titan is hostile, but useful. There are entire deserts of hydrocarbons just waiting to be turned into plastic that can build anything we need in terms of shelter and infrastructure. The rivers of methane can be harnessed to produce hydroelectricity, which will be key because the sunlight is too weak to make for a reasonable energy source. The high nitrogen content of the atmosphere could make it a great place for growing plants. Nitrogen is fertilizer. We would still need a greenhouse and a source of artificial sunlight for photosynthesis, but there's potential. Here's my favorite thing to think about. Could there already be something alive on Titan before humans arrive? Life as we know it could not survive on the surface because there is no oxygen and no water. But there could be life out there in the galaxy unlike what we know. Water is the solvent of life on Earth because it dissolves more substances than any other liquid and therefore can carry valuable chemicals, minerals, and nutrients along with it. What if the same could be true of methane? 
Cornell University researchers have played around with this idea and actually modeled a hypothetical life form that could thrive in a liquid methane environment. The researchers imagined a cell membrane made from nitrogen, carbon, and hydrogen. In their model, this showed good stability, a strong barrier to decomposition, and a flexibility similar to that of cell membranes on Earth. Imagining methane-based sea monsters and krakens and stuff is obviously pretty cool, but realistically, if there is anything that qualifies as alive floating around in there, then it's going to be more like a tadpole at best, and probably something like algae in a more practical sense. But alien algae is still cool as shit. Then there is the underground ocean. That's made of water, and we know that liquid water supports life. There would be no light, of course, so we'd have to imagine a habitat something like the deep ocean on Earth, which already has some crazy alien-looking stuff living there. There could be all kinds of weird bioluminescent fish-like creatures under the surface of Titan. But obviously, we don't know very much for sure. The best we've done so far is the Cassini space probe that got extremely close to Titan and actually managed to drop a smaller probe onto the surface that transmitted data for about 90 minutes. That's how we managed to gain the understanding of Titan that we have so far. But we are going back to Titan with a crazy mission that will bring so many answers to all of these questions we've posed today. The first stage is for NASA to land something called Dragonfly on the surface of Titan. That would be a kind of drone that would fly around the surface taking pictures and measurements and even collecting samples from the surface. NASA has this idea that they can use liquid methane from Titan to refuel the landing vehicle in combination with oxygen extracted from the surface ice. That would allow the lander to take off back into space and return to Earth loaded with samples. NASA is even making plans to drop a submarine into the largest ocean of Titan. NASA says that Titan Sub will be a fully autonomous, highly capable science craft that will allow a complete exploration of what exists beneath the waves on another world. That's something that they are hoping to launch by the year 2038. Unfortunately, the only buzzkill here is that the trip from Earth to Titan takes about seven years, give or take, and then just as long to come back. So we are at least a decade away from our next opportunity to get a close look at Saturn's moon, and it's going to be a very long wait before we actually get to see anything brought back. But what do you guys think? How long before we send our first human explorers to Titan, and what could we possibly learn in the meantime? drop your comments down below. Please don't forget to leave an offering to the algorithm gods and give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. We've got two more videos up there on the screen that you'd probably enjoy as well. Subscribe to this channel if you're not already for more space content and ring the little bell so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching the video today and we will see you next time.